Okay, let's have a look at factoring base signatures using the Fiat Shamir method. Okay, so first we'll look at public key. So with public key, we have a private key and we have a public key. So we take a message and we sign the message with our private key. Then we send the signature over and we prove it with the public key. So with something like elliptic curve uh, DSA or ECDSA, we create two values, R and S, and those two values will prove the signature has been signed with Alice's private key. So we take the message, the R and the S value, and the public key, and we should be able to prove the signature. Unfortunately, elliptic curve methods and RSA and discrete logs will all um, be deprecated within a, 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 a within the rise of uh, quantum computers at production. The methods that they use are not provably hard problems within an age of quantum computers. So we must move away from this and move towards quantum robust crypto methods for signatures. One method that's uh, fairly well known uh, for zero knowledge proofs is the Fiat Shamir method. With this, we register a secret and in the interactive form, Bob sends a challenge to Alice. Alice knows a, a secret value. And with the secret value and a random value, she sends back a result and Bob can prove that Alice still knows the secret. This can be modified within a post-quantum crypto method so that this becomes the message. And Alice will create the zero knowledge proof of the Fiat Shamir method using the message as the challenge. This then becomes a non-interactive signature method where Alice takes the message and can produce a signature based on this using her private key then Bob will be able to prove the signature using her public key. The method that we'll look at is one of the contenders, one of the three contenders for the NIST post-quantum crypto competition for digital signatures. Another method is Rainbow, but Thalithium Crystals has a good track record of using standard methods that have been around for, a, for quite a while. Overall, it uses lattice methods, which can represent uh, points in space using polynomial values. And it's, they're not represented either in the RSA form or in the elliptic curve form. We use these lattices to represent points. And then we have small errors uh, to, to be able to offset these points. But for digital signatures, what we, what dilithium uses is the Fiat Shamir method. And with this, here is the method here using lattices. So within here, we have polynomial values uh, to represent our lattice uh, structures. But in its purest form, this is the form of the Fiat Shamir method. And I'll explain this in a little minute. Uh, the message itself is defined as mu here. The n value is a prime number. G is the generator for the discrete log. And S is Alice's secret key. So then we can go ahead and work out Alice's public key, g to the power of S mod n, and work through uh, these values. This is the hash of Alice of the Alice generates a value of y, a random value for each signature, and works out that g to the power of y concatenates with the message and then takes the hash of that to find the value of e. 
Okay, and this is the paper here which outlines the method. So what we'll try to do is show the two different ways of doing this. One with discrete logs and the other with elliptic curves. Obviously, in dilithium, we'll be using lattice methods to be able to do this, but just to explain the concept, we'll use discrete logs as they are shown here and elliptic curve methods, which are the more common method of using public key encryption. Okay, so here's the, the method as it's laid out with inside the paper, uh, the prime number, the generator value, that's two or three or five, uh, at the public key. So that's the private key, the secret private, and then we create the public key from G to the power of S, and then take mod N. We then create a random number, Y, for each signature, and we compute g to the power of y mod n. And then we compute, we concatenate our message bytes onto it and then take a hash of that. We then take s, secret, multiply it by e and add y, the value that we've just taken as a random value. We then send the value of z and e over and this is our signature. On the other end, we take the values, so we should have Z and E. So we take G to the power of Z, the value here, and then we take the value of S, Alice's public key, and raise it to the power of minus E, the value that we've received here, then take more than, uh, take the message, and then take a hash. And the value we receive for E should be the same as the value that we've just computed here. Okay, so that's the, the basics of it. So let's step through the basic math that we have here for that. Okay, Alice generates a private key, generates a public key from there. She takes a random value and generates a value of Y. She then takes the value of Y, converts it to bytes, then takes the message, concatenates them together, and takes the hash to work out E. She computes S, E plus Y. Then on the other side, we will take, uh, Bob will take G to the power of Z, take the S value, her public key, raise it to the power of minus E, then concatenate the message. And hopefully the two values will be the same. This works because uh, S is G to the power of S, raised to the power of E, and then with uh, uh, the the, uh, the operations of uh, of logs, g to the power of s to the power of minus e is equal to g to the power of minus s e. Then over here, g z becomes this part here. We can then because we multiply logs together, we add them, so that becomes s e plus y minus s e results in g to the power of y, which is the same as the value that uh, we have uh, here. Okay, so here's the code that we can use to implement this. Okay, so this should exactly match what we see here. There we go. And there's our E value there, where we're computing the hash of Y plus M, concatenate M. There's this value here. Uh, we can make this smaller by taking mod of n minus one. It's a standard method that we can use in within our discrete logs and it will still compute. Okay, so there's the two values we're gonna compute. We'll multiply them together and we should get the result back again. So we'll see if this works now. Okay, so we'll just take a message and we'll do a computation on it, and hopefully we'll match in, in the end. Okay, so the code that we have, we can run here. Okay, we can run this code to see how we get on. And in the end, the values match that, that we have. Okay, so this 
uh, proves the, the method or shows a practical implementation of it. When we come to elliptic curve methods, again, we're taking this, but instead of taking g to the power of x, an exponent, we take x to the power of g. And where g is a base point on the elliptic curve and x is the value that we multiply it by. So with elliptic curve, basically we have a g point and we add gx times to give a point xg. This becomes our public key. And it's a very efficient method uh, compared to discrete logs and RSA. Okay, so here is the method here that we're, that we're going to use. This time we take our private key, we multiply it by g, the base point, to get s, y times g. Then it's the same again. Then we can compute this. This becomes uh, the value of z. On the other side, rather than g to the power of z, we take zg. And rather than s to the power of minus e, we take e minus s. Rather than multiply the values together, as we have in discrete log, we add them. Okay, so exponent becomes multiply, and multiply becomes add, point add, and point multiply in the elliptic curve. Do the same again, and we can do the computation, and we end up with the same value that we hope. So here is the code that we get. Uh, so there is uh, this one here. That's that one there. Here is the hash that we get. We're taking the two. It's a point this time, our public key. So we'll take two points and we'll hash them. And there is the point here where we're adding uh, se times y. And we can do mod of n, where mod is the order of the curve. So we do our operations in terms of the order of the curve. Here are our scalar values here, and there is the point addition that we need here. Okay, so, so that's our example here. Okay, so we'll just try this one out, and hopefully we should see that it should work and give us a match in the end for the two values of, of E that we'd compute. Again, we can we can see our code running here and compute our values. So every time we're generating new values of a private key, new values of the random key, so we should see the result value changing all the time. But the result, the E value here that we get, that Bob would get, is the same as the value of E that Alice generates. Okay, so that's been an introduction to factoring-based signatures with VHMEA.